The 17 News at Noon podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Noon podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Right now at noon, a ray of hope. One year ago, the first vaccines to fight coronavirus were administered here in Kern County. But most people did not take advantage of getting protection and allowed the virus to kill hundreds more. So what does this mean for us now as we head into what could be another surge in cases, hospitalizations and deaths? A Bakersfield doctor loses his license after being accused of negligence in the death of a young, soon to be mother. Why the victim's grieving mom says it's still not enough. Plus, time is running out on our 17 days of Christmas toy drive. We've started shipping those toys out. We'll let you know where they're going and more on this Friday, December 17th, 2021. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for the news at noon. I'm Alex Fisher. School is almost out for most students in Kern County as they get ready for winter break. But there was heightened security at many of those schools after threats were made on social media about violence across the country today. In a letter addressed to parents, the Kern High School District said while the threat does not target any KHSD schools, district police and local law enforcement are looking into the threats. Other local school districts also reached out to parents yesterday, saying they too are aware of a threat made on TikTok against, quote, every school in the USA. While school officials say they do not believe the threats are credible, they're closely monitoring the situation and taking it seriously. Schools in several states say they will be, there will be an increased police presence on campuses. And like I mentioned, this is the last day of school for students before the winter break, and most schools are on a minimum day schedule. One year ago today, the first COVID-19 vaccines were administered in Kern County. After a turbulent 12 months, the first man to roll up his sleeve says he'd do it a million times. 17's Chris Burton has more. On December 17th, 2020, Dr. Arash Hideri saw the light at the end of the tunnel. It was a rush of joy, in fact, not because I'm the first person who's getting it. It's just, to me, it was the beginning of the end of a nightmare. Hideri was the first person in Kern to receive a COVID vaccine. Sitting in the chair with his sleeve rolled up, he felt joy and pride and conviction. I had a belief in this uh, vaccination effic efficacy. And that's why I wanted to be the first person before I start recommending to the other people. For Hideri, hope was on the horizon. But as we know now, the pandemic wasn't wrapped up with a tidy bow. The new year brought a surge in cases and deaths. Between the administration of those first vaccines and the opening of vaccines to the general population, Kern County lost nearly a thousand people to the virus. People like Nina Martin who realized too late that the shot could have saved her. Should have definitely got that vaccine. Don't let that cause your death. Don't let that cause the death of one of your loved ones. Now, with winter and the Omicron variant looming, public health officials urge vaccination above all. It's crucial, they say, to preventing Omicron or whatever comes next from wreaking havoc. Getting vaccinated is going to be the key to stopping further mutations of this disease and further variants from emerging. Vaccination rates in Kern are at their highest since vaccines became widely available, according to Kerrigan. Still, our county lags behind the rest of the state, with just under half the population considered fully vaccinated. 17's Chris Burton reporting. Here locally, Kern Public Health reported today 258 new COVID cases and nine new deaths. That brings our death toll from COVID-19 to 1,897 lives lost. State data shows 122 people are in the hospital with more severe symptoms of COVID-19. 27 more are, are, are 32 more, I should say, are in the ICU and fighting for their lives. A reminder that a new statewide mask mandate is in effect. Masks must be worn at all indoor locations regardless of vaccination status. The man mandate will remain in place until at least January 15th. Hello, this is Tim Callahan with Clinica Sierra Vista, and we're excited to unveil the Community Health Center of the Future, our comprehensive care center. It's located right across the street from Memorial Hospital. We have every service under one roof, from family medicine, OBGYN care, dental services for adults and children, behavioral health, and much more. 
So find your way to better care at Clinica Sierra Vista this year at our comprehensive care center. Visit our website, clinicasierravista.org, for the latest on this project. We'll see you soon. A Bakersfield doctor has agreed to surrender his medical license effective at the end of the year after being accused of negligence in the death of a pregnant Bakersfield woman. The state medical board says Dr. Arthur Park signed an agreement earlier this month to surrender his license on December 30th and understands he will no longer be permitted to practice as a physician or surgeon here in California. In 2019, Park treated Demi Dominguez, who was 23 years old at the time, at Mercy Southwest Hospital for swelling and elevated blood pressure. A wrongful death lawsuit claims Dominguez was released the next day with instructions to take medication and monitor her blood pressure at home. Dominguez was brought back to the hospital just days later after her, after her fiancé awoke to find her having a seizure. She died and her baby was delivered by C-section, but also died. We spoke to her family yesterday about this new development. Her mother saying Park's punishment is not severe enough. I feel like the Attorney General lied to me, uh, lied to my family, lied to the Ortiz family two years ago and told them the same thing they told me, that they were going to go to court and they were going to have their day to stop this dangerous doctor. The next hearing in the lawsuit is scheduled for May 17th. And a Bakersfield doctor who surrendered his license following accusations of sexual misconduct with patients has had his license restored. Dr. Zachary Cosgrove pleaded no contest in 2007 to a misdemeanor charge of attempting to dissuade a witness. Police say he engaged in consensual sex with three patients in 2002, but several encounters turned violent. Cosgrove suffered his, or surrendered his license, but it has since been restored. Now to current soap and reality with Bakersfield Police conducting a DUI and driver's license checkpoint tomorrow night at an undisclosed location within city limits. BPD says the checkpoint will be from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. Officers will check for signs of alcohol or drug impairment, as well as proper licensing. According to BPD, research shows well-publicized and proactive DUI patrols can reduce alcohol or drug-related crashes by up to 20 percent. The CHP Bakersfield office, meantime, announced it is planning to hold a similar checkpoint tonight between 7 p.m. and 2 a.m. in an undisclosed area of unincorporated Kern County. China Peak opened its gates for the first time this season after the area received heavy snowfall earlier this week. Officials say they hope to have most of the mountain open with four feet of snow at the base and five to six feet in the higher elevations. The site continues to deal with staffing issues, but they say they've had luck finding some employees. Meantime, you can grab your snowboard and skis and head up to Alta Sierra Ski Resort next week. The owner has confirmed it is opening this Monday, just in time for Christmas break for most schools. Resort staff say they got more than two feet of snow just on Tuesday. Ticket office opens at 8 a.m. and the lifts will run from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. The 17 News at Noon podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.